Hello and thanks for joining us. I'm Maria Soreo here today at the Terranea Resort to remind everyone that January is National Mentoring Month. And joining us now are big brothers and big sisters to give us more information. Well, it takes a lot of people to make big brothers and big sisters work. In addition to having the big brothers and the little brothers, the big sisters and the little sisters, you as the CEO sort of make sure it all works. Well, I try to. I have a great staff, and that's really what's important, that we have people that know what they're doing, and uh, we have 400 volunteers under their surveillance, and it's uh, quite a job for all of us, but uh, we love it. You know, how long have you been involved with the organization? How, how long have you been a part of it? Well, uh, formerly I've been uh, part of the organization for 17 and a half years. Uh, but before that I was involved uh, just as a consultant uh, to a friend of mine who also was with the organization. You know, I know you work in promotions, Richard, and there's so many events that are tied into Big Brothers, Big Sisters um, that really make people aware of what's going on. On top of the fact that, you know, we saw the kids at the Laker event, they were having a ball, and the Big Brothers, the Big Sisters, the Littles, they were all having fun. But it takes a lot of people to make all that happen, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, from our perspective, uh, getting the word out and explaining to people, whether it's from my network of connections in marketing and promotions, that, look, it doesn't take a lot, whether it's time, whether it's some products you can donate, or even if it's just getting the word out and networking to people that can help spread the word. Uh, that's kind of why, why we're involved and how we're involved for the most part. You know, we were talking earlier, and I know that in this area specifically, um, there's a need for Big Brothers, Big Sisters. Can you address that? Sure. We uh, have some programs down here in the South Bay area that uh, we have a lot of kids that need uh, role models in their lives, and uh, one of the hardest things for us to do is to recruit men. And so we're asking uh, that there be volunteers coming forth that can help us match with boys. We, re we have about 300 boys right now on our waiting list. Not all in this area, but uh, there are quite a few down this, in this area. Seems like the biggest misconception is people think, I, I don't have time, uh, you know, too much going on. And really, it's, it doesn't take that much time to make a huge difference in someone's life. No, it doesn't. And actually, we try to tell the volunteers that uh, they can just take uh, their little brother or little sister with them, whatever they do. If they want to go shopping or if they're doing some housework or doing uh, something on their car, just take their little with them. And it uh, doesn't take that much extra time and it means a difference, makes a big difference with the little. I know that you were working on Big Night Out. Tell us about that. I want to talk about some of the events and how people can get involved in that. Yeah, Big Night Out is an event that's uh, pretty important, particularly for the kind of demographic that uh, the Big Brothers Big Sisters helps out, which is a lot in the Latino community. So Chivas USA had partnered with uh, the Big Brothers Big Sisters and put on an event where about 30 or 40 bigs or littles originally came to the first event. Uh, companies donated items of clothing, there's open raffles, there's an auction there, and the kids get to see a soccer game, they get to acknowledge each other. We had a guest appearance this year from Adam Carolla, who was a, a former big brother himself. So really the event is continuing to grow, and it's only through companies um, understanding that you can donate your money to a lot of places these days, and, and uh, it's very hard to find something that has a true impact. But when you go to these events as a company, and this is how I am continue to be around now, is uh, when you go to these events and you see that by doing just the smallest thing, uh, you genuinely are making a change. That's kind of the big reason why companies you know, can step forward and help out. It's a, it's a good cause. I notice a lot of um, the local ball teams get involved. They supply tickets as well so that people can come to games. And those are memories that people are building that they're always going to remember. Yeah, I mean, when you're a child, you've, you've got a lot of aspirations, and, and typically they kind of extend beyond what is possible. Um, going to see the ball players is fantastic, but the beauty of Big Brothers Big Sisters is that there is a, a mentor there to let you know who this is a great experience for us to share but let's talk about your grades and let's understand how you know we can make the best life for you and um, the understanding the kids have of that from the mentors is it's quite exceptional to see. So when somebody calls you and says okay I want to be a mentor what is the process like for that person? Well we have people that are professionally handle the call, the call and they'll take an application and do the follow-up and we'll have an interview and there's a background check we're very interested in two things. One is the success of the match and the success for the child, but also the safety of the child. So in today's world, we know that that can go a lot of bad ways. So uh, we're very uh, thankful that we have great professional staff that follow up and, and uh, we just uh, have a great program. 
And in meeting some of the bigs and the littles, I love the fact that you're pairing them up with things they have in common. It's not just like, okay, you're a guy, you're a guy, but you know, you might have similar interests in sports or music or art, and I, I love that. I think it's great. Well, in fact, uh, that's quite interesting because we we're here in the South Bay area, and uh, we have a lot of the littles here from this area that need someone in their life, and almost all of the bigs that we get, uh, we, we try to pair them up so they don't have to travel too far. All right, we are now here with a big sister and a little sister. Thanks so much for being with us. We want to talk to you guys about how you first became a mentor and how you and Ellie met. Sure. Well, I actually wanted to volunteer, and so I used to volunteer with Be a Mentor program up north where I used to live. So I thought the Big Sisters program, Big and Little Sister program, would be a perfect match. So I sought out some information, and then I got matched with Ellie. It was pretty easy, actually. I know that, that you get matched up, but do you also spend some time um, sort of getting to know each other and finding out what your likes are, what kind of things you enjoy doing as well? Um, yeah, well, before we do anything, we talk to each other and see like if it's something we both like to do or it's, well, we check everything beforehand okay. to see. And, and now, how old are you? I'm 16. Okay, so you're, you're in school. Yeah. Now, do you remember what it's like to be 16? <laughs> well, I thought I did, but I, I, I would say the one benefit of this program is that young adults keep you relevant, relevant because you think you're relevant until you actually speak to somebody that's 16 or 15 and it's, um, it's fun and it's enlightening. Um, certainly, when I was 16, it was a lot different. Oh, yeah. So it's really fun um, to get to know what the even what the students do in school. She has more options than I had. Um, so it's it's just fun. It's fun to get to know each other. You know, I think it's interesting because you learn so much from each other. I mean, I know a mentor is is supposed to enrich somebody's life that might need the encouragement. But what have you learned? being on the other side. Yeah, well, I learned that I have a lot to learn, first of all, and there's a lot of things going on that, like I said, keeps me relevant. Um, what's going on in school, what's, what the young uh, kids are doing, and what they want to be when they grow up, it does matter to me. Um, it matters to society, I mean, at least it should, right? Um, so she's taught me stuff about her school, what she's learning, what she's doing, uh, what things that are difficult. I don't judge. I mean, we're not here to judge. Right. We're here to offer support. And sometimes when you speak to your family or friends, right. you don't, it's a little different, right? Yeah. Sometimes you just want to get an opinion or some advice without getting everything else that comes with it. So I think that's where I can benefit and help Ellie out. And how, how often do you see each other? Once a month, once a week? How does it work? Well, since she's like, in business right now is whenever she has time or like we keep in touch no matter what like through emails through phone or through text messaging but we make sure yeah, I you had a text <laughs> well I, I'm sure she's faster than I am um, and sometimes the acronyms I don't quite get I'm not that hip on you know the acronyms but um, but you're learning it but so I'm it's learning. okay yeah I'm learning I have a busy schedule I work and I, I, I travel for work so I'll call her, we'll make a plan, and we don't deviate from that. If I say I'm going to be there, I'm there. And do you feel like you can call her anytime and say hello or if you just need to talk? Yeah, like, just say, like, okay, I had an essay due, and I was, like, so lost. Like, I was like, what do I do? And I just called her, and she was there. Like, she's been there. You, know what, you guys are, are great encouragement to give to other people. Of course, this being National Mentoring Month, we want everybody to see that it works and it's good for everybody to become a mentor. And I would say that it's almost like exercise. Um, you make every excuse not to do it. Yeah. You think it's hard. You think it takes a lot of time. It really doesn't. And the amount of time that is needed to volunteer is so small for the benefit that you get. Like exercise, right? If you just go for 10 minutes a day, right? The benefit is huge, and that's all you really need. So I would tell people that it's not as difficult as it may seem. It doesn't take a lot of time, and it makes a huge difference and a huge impact to both lives. We want to find out a little bit more about mentoring, of course. Tell me how you became a mentor. I, um, my uncle used to do Big Brothers Big Sisters. So for a while, he kind of mentioned it and all, but at one point, I wanted to do a community service project that was ongoing that didn't require every single day but um, it made me actually have to fit it into my schedule so from there I went on the website and gave him a call it was pretty simple okay, now for you Jay I know that your sister is also on the program but you had to wait a little longer is that right yeah I was on the waiting list for a couple of like I think it was like two weeks no like a year and then he just came in and served me my brother 
how long have you guys been together? Two years. Two years? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and tell me the kind of things that you do when you all get together. What kind of things do you do? You do? Well, like hiking, bike riding. Oh, yeah, he's, we saved, well, he helped me save up money for a bike, and then we went bike riding after I got my bike. Nice. So did you guys kind of talk about what you had in common, things that you like to do, that kind of stuff? Yeah, for the most part. Um, the first meeting that we had, uh, we sat down with one of the Big Brothers Big Sisters people, and they um, helped us, just kind of gave us a few questions to say, are you a sports person or are you an arts person? And also from there, we were able to figure out that we both kind of like being outside, okay. and then we also kind of like being constructive. So between being able to do a little bit of both, we go to museums and then we go hiking, or we go to a movie, then we go biking. So we try to keep, keep it mixed up. It's interesting to me because I love the fact that you have to figure out sort of who fits with who. It's not just like you're assigned to a certain person, you know, and you can really sort of build a relationship around that. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's the best part of it yeah. is as adults, we realize how easy it is to build a relationship. But as a 14 year old, it's hard. So we both are on that same level of introduction. And then from there, you just get used to each other and you learn what makes him tick a little bit and he learns what makes you tick and then after two years we we're, I mean, were pretty close Absolutely. and we, he didn't start using email until about a year ago so now we he's learning a little bit more and I'm able to share some things and all and he keeps me on my toes when I don't call for a few days and I go back and keep him on his toes. Well, how long have you been involved in the program and how, what got you going? It'll be two years in February, right Ty? Yeah. And um, what got me going is I wanted to uh, have like a direct impact and direct change in in my local community, you know, instead of just maybe thinking that voting or posting something on Facebook was yeah. was something that actually accomplishes anything. I wanted to do something real, you know. So I used to coach when I lived in New York. I coached a high school track team, and I don't have that much time anymore now that I live here. Sure. But I wanted to work with kids, and I came across this program, and uh, it's been great. We go to a lot of games. We've been to Dodger game, Laker game. MLS, we play basketball, go swimming, biking. Now, now he's a New York guy, so is he sort of influencing you on the New York teams, or? No, I want, <laughs> I want, I want him to be a Knicks fan, but yeah. it's not happening. But he's a Laker fan, right? Yeah. <laughs> no. At what point do you start to sort of build? Do you feel like you're building trust with each other? How long does it sort of take before you, you, you feel like, you know, I can, I can trust that guy, he's all right? I, I, I thought, like, when I first met him, I could trust him. Yeah. Like how much time do y'all spend together? We try to spend like at least two weekends per month. Okay. Sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more. But he's right. I mean, we click pretty quick. I mean, I thought it would take a while, but he's a super outgoing, friendly kid. And so it just kind of worked really well. They did a great job matching us. We are talking with mentors and the people that they mentor, big brothers, big sisters. We've got a big sister and a little sister here. Welcome. Um, Tell us how you became friends and how you became involved in your organization. Um, well, for me, I decided that I wanted to give back and I thought that Big Brothers and Sisters was the best way to do that so that I could um, help a child, you know, just show them something different. And so Anaya and I met, I went to her school okay. and um, they had, she was sitting in the classroom and so I walked in and they introduced us and initially she was shy and I was, you know, I was a little shy too. You know, we were nervous to meet each other for the first time, but since then we've been stuck together like glue, so. No, how long have you guys been together? Three years. Wow, okay, this is a long time. Now, tell me the kind of things that you guys do when you're together. We go like ice skating to our house, different places. Yeah. What kind of things did you find you had in common? I can see your personalities are very similar. <laughs> yeah, we are. We're, it's funny because my birthday's April 9th and hers is April 10th. So, oh <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think that just because, you know, the same sign and being close like that, it just gives us an even stronger bond. Something that seems to be a thread between everybody that's a part of Big Brothers Big Sisters is the fact that you're so much alike and that the, I think as the mentor, you're, you're giving so much, but you're getting so much back in return. I initially thought it was about me giving back, <laughs> yeah. but Anaya has changed my life and has made me a better person. And I just try harder because I want to do good for her so that she can be proud of who I am. So it's not just about me being proud of her, but it's I want her to always be proud of me. Was it hard for you to um, to, tr to build trust or? 
No, not really. She's like nice and stuff, so it's easy. <laughs> did, did you just kind of know when you met that maybe this was going to be the right person for you, a good friend? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's pretty amazing the way that it works and the way that. No, it does. But I think initially going in um, the process, they asked us a lot of questions even before they match us, so they get to know who we are mm -hmm. as the mentors first, and so I think it helps them to find the right child to match with us, so that it can be successful and it can be a long-term um, relationship and bond. What kind of advice would you give to other people? This is a National Mentoring Month, and this is why we wanted to sit down with everyone and, and just talk about um, you know, people to get involved, to be a mentor, um, because there's so many people out there. What, would you, what advice would you give people that might want to do it, but maybe are a little leery? Um, I would give them advice. Um, just be theyself, and they might end up like me and Erica. <laughs> Do you meet each other's families as well over the process? How does that work? Yes. Um, I've met um, her brother, her sister, her mom. Um, they're very, I built a, because in order to build a relationship with Naya, of course, I had to build a relationship with her family so that they're comfortable sure. when I pick her up, you know, that they know she's safe. So she, like, she's become my family, but her family has also become mine as well. And then she's met my dad. Like, we've all done some outings together. And yeah, we're like one big family. Now for my next guest look familiar to you, that's because they are. We are now joined by Matt and Thomas, and you actually are going to play some music for us today here. Yes, I am. All right, so let's, let's hear some music. Now, you guys were at the Lakers event that we did with Big Brothers, Big Sisters, is that right? Yes, that is correct. Okay, and, and I've heard over here from Matt that you are teaching him about music, yes? Yes, I am. I told him that I played the violin in third grade last year. Now, is he learning how to play too or is he just learning about music? He's just learning about music. Okay, okay. I might be telling him about the positions and fingerings and stuff, but he's not really tr pr practicing it on an <laughs> instrument. And practice makes perfect, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> okay, we're going to listen to your music and then we're going to talk. How's that sound? That sounds good. Okay, great so to me. Let's do it. Let's hear some music. Okay. Now, what song are we hearing? We're going I'm going to play Jingle Bells. Now, we're so glad that you guys are back here with us because this month is National Mentors Month, and we wanted you to come back and tell our audience, um, share your story again, tell us how you, you, you met, and we already know some of the things that you're teaching each other. So tell us how long you guys have been together. We've been together it's like since January, so it's almost about a whole year. Okay, and how often do you all see each other? Uh, we see each other um, at least two times a month, if not more, depending upon my schedule and Thomas's schedule. Um, but roughly, I would say two times a month. This month, Thomas has been, we've been seeing each other, what, three times in the last 10 days? So we've seen, you, are you sick of me yet? <laughs> no, I'll never do that. Aww. I'll never become sick of you. Oh, that's such a nice thing to say. So, When you first wanted to be a mentor, what sort of encouraged you to, to do so? I would say um, I have two, or had two, and still have two great uh, role models in my life, one being my grandfather and one being my father. Um, so it, it, when I was growing up, it was always about giving back. And um, once I heard the opportunity that Big Brothers Big Sisters um, is, was affording me, um, it was a great opportunity for me to step up and um, try and be the mentor that I've had in my life um, to someone younger than myself. It seems like it's more important just to realize that it's time together, not so much what you do, but just spending time talking, hanging out. Is that true? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. What, what kind of selves, all types of stuff. What, what kind of things do you guys talk about? Talk about all types of stuff with him. Okay. Usually, when during the school year, it's school stuff. Okay. So tell us how long before you sort of both felt like you had that trust or that bond together? We'll ask Matt. I would say um, after the first time we met, 
Um, Thomas is, as you can tell, a very outgoing individual, easy to get along with. Um, and I've, I'm similar personality as Thomas. So the two of us, I believe clicked the first time we met. Um, and we've been rolling pretty strong for shoot. Like Thomas said, just about a year now. So I would say the first initial meeting we bonded great. And from there on out, we've been, uh, un unstoppable. Yeah. It seems that way. What I love about both of you, this is the second time I've had an opportunity to talk to you, and I feel like you're family. You're just family, and you guys have been together for a long time. Yeah, I feel like that too. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I think that when people see that, that it's going to make them want to be mentors, and that's really what we want. What advice would you give somebody who um, might want to be a mentor but's unsure about it? I told them, you may want to... It's a very good idea, because okay. it's good to return what you, what you have gotten. That's, that is very, I don't think that it was said any better than that, was it? Uh, no, uh, and as you can tell, Thomas is wise beyond his years. Yeah. Not uh, many nine-year-olds would give you that type of answer, but no. um, it's rewarding to know uh, that I've had this type of effect on him and to see the benefits, and truly is a blessing to have Thomas in my life. Um, and help help him along like I've been helped. And we are now joined by actually Thomas's mom and Rosario. You work with Big Brothers, Big Sisters, so we're going to talk a little bit about how you became involved and a little bit more about Big Brothers, Big Sisters themselves because we have some more questions. Talking directly, your son is in the program and he is amazing. What need did you feel that you needed for him to be in the program? How did you sort of get involved with that? Well, there's an African program that says it takes a village to raise a child. Right. And I'm a single mom. Right. And I know that there is an importance of having male figures and other figures around. And also, my parents always raised me in a really diverse, they tried really hard to keep me involved in different things so that I didn't stay in my little box. So I knew that Big Brothers Big Sisters would give my son the opportunity to go places I couldn't take him and to explore a life that I don't know anything about. Yeah. Ros Rosario, how does it work when a mom comes to you and says, you know, we, we need that extra support? What, how, how does it happen? Well, they go through an interview process. We want to find out about their family situation. We want to find out what they feel their son or daughter could uh, gain from the program. And, and we talk to the kids because we want to get to know their personality, their interests, and their preferences. And parental preference is very important also. So once we do that, we have to say, now listen, I probably won't come back next week or next month with a big brother for you, it's gonna take some time, but the reason that it takes time is because we wanna find the right big brother or big sister for you. Nobody's a number on a list, and um, we wanna make sure that when we make a match, a big brother, big sister match with a little, that it's gonna be a good match because we want not only the child to gain something from it, but we want the volunteer to have a good experience also. So um, it takes some time, it's a bit of a formula, but when we do it, we, we make sure that it's the right, that the right for each other. Now, did you know the first time that you met Matt that he was right for Thomas? Almost instantaneously. Okay. It's almost like we got in the room and I just kind of disappeared because they were together. <laughs> and I said, okay, I guess I could just step back now. <laughs> what are your biggest concerns as, as a single mom worrying about your, your nine-year-old son? My biggest concerns is that I don't have a... I don't have a big enough piece of the pie to share with him to expand his world the way my parents were able to do for me because they were both there. I went to ice skating and tap dance and I went everywhere. I did everything and Thomas didn't always have that opportunity. So that's something his exposure to the world, you know, whatever you, however you color your world is all you know when you grow up. So if you don't have those experiences when you're younger, then you grow up thinking that your world is this four square blocks, and I didn't want him to have that. What kind of things does he tell you when he, when he <laughs> comes, when he comes back from being with Matt? What kind of things does he tell you that they talk about? Just the conversations they have. I try and not to delve into that because the same way we have our own world, yeah. you know, that's it's special for him. You know, that's his person to go to for whatever that is. So I don't want him to feel like every time he goes out, that you know. Lay, lay down verbatim and give me the typewritten stenograph of everything that you guys said and did. But I know that he has positive experiences. I know that 
He enjoys himself. I know that he feels safe. Right. You know, first thing you always ask your kids, what are you okay? Yeah, exactly. So he's always safe. And big brothers, big sisters, make sure they call me every month to verify anything, if there's anything that's incongruent, you know, because they ask the big brother to talk, they call them, and then they call and they talk to my son, they talk, talk to me. And, and you know, I think for me, just watching all of this happen is so touching, and it's gotta be so much for you being a part of the organization, because you see that this truly works. Right. I've been for the organization for a long time. This is my 18th year, and it's the best job in the world. You, met the, you meet the best people in the world, and you become a part of uh, magic, you know, when you see bigs and littles. This last weekend, we had our um, we had an event, and um, when we, bigs and littles come out together, you see them, and you kind of sometimes they look a little different: tall, short, black, white, Latino, older, younger, and you think. Hmm, what brought them together? You'd think that if you didn't do what I do, you know? And they're, they look sometimes um, different, um, but they seem very similar because of the relationship that they've developed and the kind of vibe that they have with each other. So um, so I, I just think it's a wonderful organization to be involved in as, as an employee, and I see that the volunteers get a lot out of it. They tell me, you know, I signed up to do this for somebody else, but I'm really getting a lot a lot more out of it, and that's really important to us because if you're going to um, give of your time, um, it's important that you have a good experience too. So that's part of our formula in terms of putting them in the right situation for them at the time. What would be the best advice you could give maybe another mom or even a single dad who says, you know, I, I could use a little extra help, but I'm unsure. What, what, what would you say to them? I would say for the parents to consider the expansion of your child, not just what you can give them, but what more people, you know, you know how much you would give to your child. Right. I know, and you know, just from meeting Thomas twice, you would give Thomas anything he wants if you meet him two seconds. I probably would. You're right. <laughs> so just consider how much more insight. You know, Matt has a different background than I do. Matt can teach him things that I can't. Both Matt and I both, um, I started my own business. Matt ha Matt's family has his own business. So Thomas can see from opposite perspectives that it's not just something your mama is saying to you. You know, sometimes you think it's just your family. No, it's not something mom is saying to you. Matt turns around and tells them the same thing. Are there other parents that sometimes call and they're unsure or they're, they're not sure about the whole situation? Maybe they feel like, oh, well, should I be asking for this for my child? Or And so what we say is that and we feel any child, every child who wants to have a big brother or big sister can benefit from a big brother or big sister. The most important thing about our program is that it's permission-based. All the kids are in our program because they want to be in the program, not because someone's making them do it or a principal says you can't come back to school unless you don't. I mean, the families in our program have a variety of backgrounds, just like our volunteers. Our volunteers come in all shapes and sizes, all walks of life, old, young, blue collar, white collar, no collar. And, you know, and our, the families have a variety of backgrounds too, but the most important thing is that they want to be in the program. And so when they come to us, you know, they sometimes may have some hesitation in terms of, well, you know, are the volunteers safe or um, do I have to, um, you know, live in a certain location. No, Big Brothers Big Sisters is all over the country. Um, our organization covers the whole county, so we probably have a little brother or a little sister waiting, you know, near you. Well, once again, an amazing place to be a big brother or a big sister. It will change your life. It'll change a child's life. So be a mentor. Join everybody in January at National Mentors Month. Thank you all for being with us, sharing your stories, and we will see you next time around the peninsula.